Okay, welcome back to members of uh, 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing uh, seminar in uh, the Christian philosophy of Hegel is uh, Phenomenology of Spirit. We're going to take a look at uh, our second lesson. It's going to be pages 79 to 91, paragraphs 132 to 150, so I'll give you the paragraphs each time too, so It'll be paragraphs 132 to 150. We're going to take a look at uh, force and understanding in this lesson. Remember, we have been looking at perception, and perception seeks to identify the uh, IDAS ideas that make up the kingdom, and then understanding gathers those IDAS ideas or those concepts into a uh, an organic interrelated whole into a structure of existence and uh, there's a force that uh, contributes to getting that done and that is what this lesson addresses let's go to block one we'll take a look at the concepts of force and understanding concepts of force and understanding understanding in itself perception brings thought together as the unconditioned universal a universality that has returned back into itself now understanding as for another reaches the stage of concept the self needs to grasp its perceived object as Idos idea or Idos concept. The Greek Idos, I translate as idea. Hegel translates it as concept. Within the developing reflection of our subjectivity. Subjectivity plays a big role here in uh, constructing the truth. Understanding is the filling out of the content of this notion of the true. We discover the ideas, we discover the concepts that make up the kingdom, but they all have uh, content that we need to fill out uh, through our own work of the subjectivity. Through the perceiving consciousness, object as IDAS does emerge, being for the other and return for the self are moments that self supersede themselves in favor of always supporting the divine unconditioned universal the independence of the concept is superseded by the notion of the interrelated whole in understanding we're looking at uh, a sign model a world view if you will and that is true understanding when we actually see all of these concepts gathered together in a, a worldview, a, a, an ontology, a structure of existence. Now we are ready to consider the concept of force. So remember last lesson we went from sense certainty, which is uh, the mistaken taken of taking of surface reality as the true reality. And uh, everybody does that and it's, it's wrong. Surface reality is not the true reality. It is not. Behind surface reality, there is a realm of spirit in scripture that is called kingdom of God. That is the true reality. It is always moving from potential to actual, from dunamis to energia, and it does that movement, it fulfills that movement due to an inherent force. Block two, we're going to address that concept of force. Let's go to block two. Understanding force within the realm of spirit as energia. There you go. The Greek, New Testament Greek word energia, which is actualization of the spirit. Dunamis is potential of spirit. Energia is actualization of the potential of spirit. Now, energia as sublation. And in the German, force is alphaben. 
negation of the surface reality and affirmation and preservation of the inner universal reality. It is the mo movement of perceiving itself, a process of our apprehension of the true. Hegel calls that the force of, in German, Aufheben. It's uh, becoming through negation. It's the act of becoming through negation in the German, Aufheben. If you go to that composite lesson that I put uh, on the channel, you'll notice that right after sense certainty you pass through Aufheben. The uh, becoming of the true through the process of negation. But it's actually negation of surface determinate reality to unveil true inner universality. Now block two, note two, energy as the supersession of this negative moment. We reach the unconditioned universal through the working out of the dialectic. Force is the working out of the dialectic for Hegel. Block two, note three, energy as the medium of the universal itself. The universal itself has a force. Force is a self-actualization of their own universal concepts. Force has a power of its own in its own language. We know that language is very powerful, and especially the concepts of the kingdom have a great deal of power. I mean, you, you use the term crucifixion. That term means a lot to a believer. It means a tremendous amount. It has a power in the word. The word itself has power. Or if you couple that with resurrection, you have a tremendous power. So these concepts in their own universal significance are a force in their own right. Force is the universal reflected back into itself's subjectivity. The determinate forms of otherness, they vanish. Then paragraph, here you go, here you go. Every once in a while I try to give you the paragraph numbers. Block 2, note 3D. Hegel gives us the definition. Paragraph 141, the notion of force equals universal essence in its energia actualization. The universal becomes actualized. That's the force. That is the notion of force. Paragraph 141, if you've got the Miller translation, the paragraphs are numbered. In other words, energia actualization of the spirit. That's what force is. It is energia actualization of spirit. For Hegel, that is the force behind the uh, movement of the universal concepts. We close out in block three with paragraphs 147 through 150. Perception is posited as the true in the realm of spirit, which is the realm of positing. Hegel places a tremendous amount of emphasis on this realm of positing. Perception is posited as an inner world, as understanding, but it still needs to be filled with specific content. Block three, note two, filling the unfilled content of understanding. The inner world fills itself out through the play of force, the play of energia, as a force that we solicit. We ask for that fulfillment. We ask for the fulfillment of God's spirit. We ask for the fulfillment and the energia actualization of spirit. Block 3, note 3, the inner world and solicited force. 
Hegel calls it the force of the absolute reversal. Now the inner world is the essential. Now the inner world is the necessary. We've given up on this idea that surface reality is the real. No, we have a complete reversal. It's the inner world that is essential. It is the inner world behind surface reality that is the necessary realm of spirit. So we've got this uh, reversal. And it's through the flux of posited essence. Paragraph 149. And here you go. Block 3, note 3, D. Paragraph 150. Our posited truth is posited into the realm of laws. That's the first time this has ever come up. We posit our truth, our structure of reality, our sign model into the realm of laws as a realm of implicit universal unity in a form as a form of being, as an expression of the universal reality. Our worldview, we contend, is universal divine reality. And it is fulfilled by the law of attraction. And all of this is to be understand, understood as ontological concepts. All of the concepts that we are working with are concepts that contribute to ontology. What's ontology? The structure of existence. Ontology is a worldview. All of the concepts uh, have ontological significance. When Ross gave us his uh, worldview, every one of the concepts that made up that worldview had ontological significance. They contributed to the overall structure of reality. And what did uh, Ross present? He presented a uh, ontological trinity of the Father in himself, going out of himself to create, and then going out of himself in the Son to redeem, and then the Father returning to himself as Holy Spirit, lifting creation up through new heaven and new earth. It's a circle. A, in a genuine worldview is a circle. So we close out with that uh, paragraph 150. Our worldview which is our understanding, where we interrelate all of the IDAS concepts, it is our picture of universal reality. And it is a, a structure of existence. It is an ontology. It is an ontology. Now, for me, what's really being brought out in this lesson is this concept of force in block two, and uh, I've said it many times before, but in, and Hegel prefers the Greek concepts. He prefers the concepts in the New Testament. And energia, energia is the actualization of spirit. Dunamis in the Greek is the potentiality of the realm of spirit. So there are many instances when we can see, hey, there's a great potential there for the spirit to work, that is dunamis. That's a potential power, a potential realm, a potentiality of spirit that is moving toward energy actualization of spirit. So block two, Hegel gives us the meaning of force. And if you go to... Uh, Block 2, note 3, that's going to be our recap. Force is the self-actualization of the universal concepts themselves. They have force within their own language. Force is the universal reflected back into our subjectivity. The determinate forms are negated and vanish. Surface reality is negated and will vanish. 
Then we have paragraph 141, the definition. The notion of force is universal essence being actualized, universal essence in its actualization. Paragraph 141, if you have the Miller translation, you can go exactly to that paragraph, and there's Hegel's definition. The notion of force equals universal essence in its actualization. How do we come to know all of these individual concepts moving into the stage of understanding when we notice that, hey, they are all part of an interrelated whole, an interrelated structure of existence? Well, it's, it means that concepts have to actualize that to make it happen for us to recognize it. And that's what Haeckel says. They do that. The notion of force is the universal essence, each concept being actualized to reveal to us how they are all interrelated. How does creation relate to the fall? How does the fall relate to redemption? How does redemption relate to new heaven and new earth? How did new heaven and new earth relate to return moment? Well, it's because of this definition. The notion of force equals the universal essence, all of those concepts of the kingdom, in their own actualization revealing that they are interrelated to each other, that they form a structure of existence, that they do form an ontology. Just remember the term ontology. Ontology means structure of existence. We simply call it worldview. When we put together a worldview, that is an ontology. That is a structure of existence. And the scriptures tell us that the structure of existence is triune. The Trinity is an ontological trinity for Hegel, and uh, the trinity for Ross, <laughs> which I love, is an ontological trinity. The uh, worldview that Ross shares with us, which I think is fantastic, it is a worldview of an ontological trinity. It begins with God, and it ends with the return back to God. It's a circle, and that is a correct and genuine uh, biblically-based worldview. But Hegel tells us that there's a force that brings this about, and the notion of force equals the universal essence in its being actualized. The notion of force equals universal essence in its actualization. Put a big circle around that uh, paragraph 141 for your definition of force. Very good little lesson here. Uh, you notice I only went uh, 12 pages. <laughs> I, I got smart and uh, did not do 20 pages. I did 12. That's going to wrap up uh, pages 79 to 91. Paragraphs 132 to paragraph 150 will pick up with uh, self-consciousness in our next lesson. Our next lesson goes to self-consciousness. That begins on page 104. So next time, we're going to move to self-consciousness. It will begin on page 104. That wraps up pages 79 to 91.